All right, so here's an international story for uh, local potential visitors from South Africa over to the UK. Uh, visiting the United Kingdom could come at an extra cost. And no, I do not mean the rand pound cost or the rand euro at the moment. The cost of work and tourist visas going to rise 15%, while the cost of all other visas going to go up at least 20%. Let me bring in uh, Ollie Barrett, our UK correspondent, joining us uh, this evening. Hello to you, Ollie. Evening. Uh, where's the extra money coming in? Why is this happening? This is happening, uh, Gareth, for domestic political reasons in many ways. What has happened is that the government of Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, have been trying for some time to uh, try and bring an end to a huge round of industrial action across swathes of the economy. Strikes in the health service, for example, in schools. Um, we've seen other parts of uh, the public services on strike at various points over the last year or so because of the cost of living crisis that the UK is experiencing like pretty much every other country around the world and the government is trying to end that round of industrial dispute with a new pay offer to public service workers. It says it's going to pay most public sector workers in the coming year 6 to 7% more than they were previously getting. So not actually keeping up with inflation but still an expensive jump in terms of public spending. Uh, and the way that Rishi Sunak's government says it wants to pay for this is partly through hiking the cost of visas for international travellers uh, and migrants coming to the UK. The Prime Minister says that that is a fair way to raise some of that money because what he doesn't want to do, he says, is put up taxes any further uh, or another round of borrowing to pay uh, for that public sector pay increase. So one of the ways that the Prime Minister is suggesting filling that gap is by hiking those visas for international travellers from places like South Africa. Yeah, and I suppose the problem is you nailed it on the head there as you were, used the word tourist, Ollie, as well. Uh, is the UK very much a tourist destination in its own right? Of course it is, but very much seen as a hop, skip and a jump across to mainland Europe as well. There's got to be a knock-on effect here for the tourist sector, especially considering it's summer where you are. We got the snow the other day, you got the sunshine. It's got to be a problem for tourism. It, that's exactly what the tourism sector is saying. It is worried about these uh, hikes that we're going to see, 15 to 20 percent for various different types of visa. And, and the tourism industry is saying that that just comes at a very difficult time when it's already more expensive for uh, people to fly, for example. Um, when they get to the UK, things are more expensive than the last time they came because of the inflation rate that is being seen in this economy. And that's also a concern that's being replicated in a similar way in other sectors. For example, in the medical sector. Uh, you're hearing a lot of doctors unions saying it's going to be difficult uh, to recruit staff that are desperately needed in the National Health Service if it's going to cost those uh, employees more to get over to the United Kingdom. The other element to this added to tourism uh, when it comes to work visas is that the other thing the government is doing is hiking the fee that allows people who come here on a, a migrant visa, a work visa of some sort, to access the National Health Service if they need to be treated by the NHS. That is also leading to criticism from migrants groups, for example, who say that that will sometimes be the most uh, vulnerable people having to pay double effectively because they're paying through their taxes when they're here in the UK uh, anyway for the NHS. They're also paying this extra fee to access NHS services. So those are some of the criticisms that are being levelled at the government, some of the concerns that are being uh, levelled at the government. Um, uh, number 10 insists that this is just uh, something that has to be done, that the UK wants to pay its public sector workers more money and that that money's got to come from somewhere. The government also says that many of these visa fees haven't risen for some time mm. uh, and that therefore it's time to put them up in a, in a significant way to try and uh, catch up with inflation but also some of the intervening years um, since the, the visa fees rose in a significant way last time around. Yeah, we call it here in South Africa an interest rate equivalent wage as well. I'm not quite sure what it's called over in the UK but I'm sure it's something along uh, those lines as well. Uh, Ollie, I, I don't know if you want to go into too much detail of all the different visas. Uh, I mean, obviously you're not international relations but when we talk about visas, are we, you and I mentioned tourism of course that's a big one but surely this is going to impact for example student visas working visas ancestral visas I can keep going is this across the board or is it just one kind of visa 
yeah, all of those visas, partner, spouse visa, uh, skilled worker visas, uh, all the various different visas for uh, international travellers and migrants are, are going to be affected by this. So it is going to be uh, across the board, we think, because, and I say we think, because the government hasn't released all of the full detail yet about exactly which visas are going to rise by exactly which amount and when, crucially, that hike is going to uh, kick in. So there's still some detail to be ironed out here, but it is going to have an effect not just on tourists, as you say, not just on people moving to the UK from South Africa, potentially for employment reasons, but also people uh, trying to make that move for reasons to do with their family, uh, that kind of thing as well. So, uh, yes, for effectively anyone uh, coming from South Africa to the UK uh, who needs a visa, they're going to find that visa becoming much more expensive. Yeah, I mean, certainly it is as well. As you say, we wait to hear what the dates are uh, on this as well. I wonder if it's not going to be just in time for the Christmas rush from South Africa to the UK, but we'll wait to hear uh, on that as well. Domestically, though, obviously here in South Africa, Ollie, we worry about the cost because it is so very expensive when we convert. Domestically, though, if you put on your UK hat now, what sort of opposition are you seeing to this, whether in the House of Commons or within Number 10 over in the UK? Or is this everyone just accepting what the Prime Minister says? And let's go for it. Well, one of the uh, areas of criticism or concern, shall we say, is that uh, some people are pointing to the government's plans and saying they're not sure they actually even add up. They're not sure just to get you over here as well. And then, as you say, Oli, uh, it leaves a gap in the economy and uh, in, the, uh, in the sector uh, that it uh, might be contributing to. Oli Barrett, all the way from the UK for us this evening. Thank you very much, uh, Indy. But it's uh, right across the board, as Oli was alluding to, there's so many of them. Uh, whether you go from Ancestry Visa, I'm taking a quick look uh, at the IHS website, Ancestry Visa down to Visitors Visas, Youth Mobility Scheme Visa, student visa, I can go on for a couple of minutes. I won't bore you with all of it. Point is, if you're planning to go over to the UK, uh, you might want to just double check uh, before you head off to go and get your visa done this evening. Ollie Barrett, UK correspondent, thank you very much indeed for your time.